Hello, how do you do? Neil Martin is my name and I would like to talk to you a little about The Helping Hand, a piece I wrote a few years, three years ago for the Ulster Orchestra. It came about through the orchestra touring to parts of the north that they hadn't been before and to venues that couldn't accommodate the full orchestra so they wanted to have some chamber music concerts and they asked me to write something for the concert in the Seamus Heaney home place in Balahi and Seamus and myself had been uh, had been friends for a long time for about 25 years and um, we knew we knew each other well so um, after thinking and reading through a lot of stuff, there were two main poems I settled on for The Helping Hand, Station Island and The Given Note. And I'll talk a little more about The Given Note in a while, but Station Island um, uh, was a series of poems that Seamus wrote in the early 1980s. And they were based on uh, his experiences of going to uh, Loch Derg, a pilgrimage, uh, on the Fermanagh Donegal border and uh, he went there as a student uh, so that's probably dates it to something like the late 1950s and it's a fairly tough uh, intense uh, pilgrimage uh, not much food not much rest and so on and anyway all those years later then come the 1980s when Seamus wrote the poem in the dream of the poem if you like in the in the world of the poem he talks about as he's coming ashore uh, on a boat uh, a bony hand coming down from the jetty a helping hand to help him up onto the up onto the terra firma and he he recognizes in this poem after a while that that person helping him up is the the uh, uh, james joyce uh, who's encouraging him saying you need to do your own thing uh, you need to uh, get back into harness, ignore what anybody else thinks about your work and your poetry, step up to the plate and write it. So um, I decided to write for an octet and I based it on the same instrumentation as Schubert's octet. That's clarinet, bassoon, French horn and one of each of the strings. And the helping hand is in three movements. The first movement portrays something of the confusion and the anxiety of uh, someone trying to find their own voice. The second movement, the slow movement that I'll talk about a little later, is based on uh, Port Nabuki, a traditional air from Kerry. And the third movement in the helping hand is full of zeal and energy and invigoration and uh, shame is powered on, as it were, by the, by the shade of James Joyce in the poem. Station Island, 12. Like a convalescent, I took the hand, stretched down from the jetty sensed again an alien comfort as I stepped on ground to find the helping hand still gripping mine, fish cold and bony. But whether to guide or to be guided, I could not be certain. For the tall man in step at my side seemed blind, though he walked straight as a rush upon his ash plant, his eyes fixed straight ahead. Then I knew him in the flesh, out there on the tarmac among the cars, wintered hard and sharp as a blackthorn bush. His voice eddying with the vials of all rivers came back to me, though he did not speak yet. A voice like a prosecutor's or a singer's, cunning, narcotic, mimic, definite as a steel nib's downstroke, quick and clean. And suddenly he hit a litter basket with his stick, saying, your obligation is not discharged by any common right. What you must do must be done on your own. So get back in harness. The main thing is to write for the joy of it. Cultivate a workless that imagines its haven like your hands at night, dreaming the sun in the sunspot of a breast. You are fasted now light-headed, dangerous, take off from here and don't be so earnest. Let others wear the sackcloth and the ashes. Let go, let fly, forget. You've listened long enough. Now strike your note. So the theme, the principal theme of the second movement of The Helping Hand 
um, I have taken from a traditional air uh, called Port Nabuki, which translates into English as, as the, the song or the tune of the spirits. And it comes from Inishvikalan, one of the Blasket Islands off the coast of Kerry. And um, Seamus Heaney first heard uh, this air in the late 1960s when Mary and himself uh, made a trip down to uh, Coulee near Balavurni, uh, southwest Cork, to visit with Sean O'Reda, the composer and musician Sean O'Reda. And um, so moved was Seamus by this. Uh, that uh, he, he, this glorious air, that he wrote the poem, The Given Note, uh, off the back of that. Uh, O'Reda, of course, conducted the Ulster Orchestra uh, in the Whitla Hall in Belfast at the Belfast Festival at Queen's uh, in the late 1960s, so a very strong association there as well. And the content of the poem, The Given Note, is really uh, Seamus urging himself, striving to be a better poet, it was a kind of leitmotif to some degree in a lot of Seamus's writing, always always trying to go better and go deeper and find uh, the best way of explaining himself. Um, so a very glorious poem and it influenced the, the slow movement, the middle movement that you're about to hear um, from The Helping Hand. And then, of course, as I said earlier, uh, Station Island, and specifically sequence 12 from Station Island, uh, the great encouragement of Joyce uh, 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 to Heaney spurred him on. And I have to say that Seamus was a great encourager, uh, encourager of my own uh, work. And for that, I'm, I'm deeply indebted to him. I hope you enjoy. The Given Note. On the most westerly blasket, in a dry stone hut, he got this air out of the night. Strange noises were heard by others who followed, bits of a tune coming in on loud weather, though nothing like melody. He blamed their fingers and ear as unpractised, their fiddling easy, for he had gone alone into the island and brought back the whole thing. The house throbbed like his full violin. So whether he calls it spirit music or not, I don't care. He took it out of wind off mid-Atlantic. Still, he maintains from nowhere. It comes off the bow gravely, rephrases itself into the air. <laughs> 